Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at technical analysis. What is technical analysis? It's basically attempt to exploit reoccurring and predictable pattern in a stock price to generate superior investment performance. Simply put, looking at stock prices and you, in the hope of finding some sort of a trend, some predictable pattern that's going to create superior return to your portfolio. Now, now, technicians, people that use technical analysis, they don't basically throw fundamental information out of the window, but they believe that prices move slowly to their intrinsic value. Therefore, if they can see a trend before the, the price actually react, then they are ahead of the game, whether the stock is going up or the stock is going down. So much of the technical analysis, they'll try to uncover trends in the market prices and basically they're searching for momentum. If they see prices going up, up, up or down, 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 they'll try to make some sense out of it. So momentum, momentum can be absolute, in which case one searches for upward price trends or relative. How's your stock doing to other, to other similar stocks or how your stock doing to other, uh, to the industry or how your stock performing toward the market overall. So let's take a look at momentum and specifically move and averages. What is the move and average? Basically looking at the price of the stock or the price of an index for this matter and averaging the price over a given interval where that interval is updated as time passes. For example, if we're looking at a 50 day moving average, first we, co we compute the 50 day averages for the stock for over a period of time, which is 50 days. Then the average is recomputed each day by dropping the oldest observation and adding the newest one. So once we get to day 51, day one is, is out of the computation and we'll add 51 becomes the day 50. And the best way to look at this is to look at an actual graph. This is the moving 50 day moving average for Intel. And this is the line I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark it in red. This is the moving average. And obviously you can see the, the stock prices fluctuation in dark, the darker blue. And what does it tell us? Basically, one way to look uh, to utilize this 50 day moving average is once the stock price drops below, for example, if we look at point B here, drops below the 50 day moving average, that's a bearish sign. Therefore, we sell once the stock price, as in, as in point A here, rises above the 50 day moving average, it's a bullish sign. Therefore, we buy. Now, is this scientifically proven absolutely not this is very subjective this is very subjective and i'm going to be using the word subjective many times because some people look at the 100 day and 200 day so depending what period you are looking at when did you start your day one to day 50 uh, you could also do 100 day and 200 day and some people what they do they use 50 and 100 and 200 all in conjunction together so you're not really bullish until you move above 100 and you're bearish when you dip below 100 so there are many many usage of these averages it just it just it, it just an idea one way to look at momentum to look at this is a good example because it shows you that once it, it once we reaches b the stock reaches b price which is around 36 it drops and it kept dropping so that was yeah that was a good selling signal so this is a kind of a, a chart that really illustrate the concept but it doesn't mean it works all the time so we have to be aware of that it doesn't mean it's going to work all the time um, and what happened with these moving averages? Uh, we spoke about algorithmic trading, and also it doesn't have to be algorithmic trading. Even you know, if you have a sometime with with your brokerage account, you can program your uh, your uh, your account, or you can program your software that's provided by Schwab or uh, or any other uh, brokerage house to execute those trades. For example, you tell the system once Amazon crosses the 50 day moving average up, you buy down, you sell, and it will automatically generate those buying and selling. And as a result, sometime you hear uh, complaining in the market that those are all algorithmic trading. So basically once it b hits below 50, you know, everybody, everyone is aware of it. They will trigger selling orders. Again, how true is that? Um, again, because you have different ones, 100 day, 200 day, it's really subjective, but this is how it works. This is another example of it. Here we are looking at the weekly. This is for an index, the Dow Jones Industrial, the weekly, and notice the movement. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. But notice the average is pretty flat in a sense that it doesn't, that's the, that, that's the purpose of an average, is to, is to flat, flatten things out. But notice here also at week 16, the, the Dow falls below, it is moving average, weekly moving average, I guess, and notice the stock kept on dropping.
point and figure chart, this is one of the oldest chart on Wall Street. It, it was created in 1898, and you're gonna see why in a moment it was created during that time. This chart has no time dimension. Therefore, you're not looking over a particular period of time. It simply traces significant upward or downward movement in stock prices. Now, how do we define significant? We're gonna see in a moment without regard to their timing. So what's gonna happen, we're gonna build a chart and we're gonna place an X every time we have an increase by a certain increment and an O every time we have a decrease by certain in increment. And this chart can be created by hand and that's why it was created in 1898 because back then they did not have data analytics tool or software to to process this so basically this is this is a completed chart but let's take a look at how it works for example for this um, series of prices for for a particular stock price we're starting january 2nd at 40 dollars and now we're going to trace we're going to start to fill out this chart once we have a two dollar increment now this two dollar increment you set it um usually when it's less than 100 the price of a stock is less than 100 dollars they use a dollar increment if it's more if it's more than 100 they use two dollar increment but it doesn't matter this is for the purpose of illustration so we're starting at january 2nd 40 dollars january 3rd the stock price is 40 dollars and 50 cent we don't do anything january 4th 41 dollars january 5th the price hit 42 which is a two dollar increment what we do is we think of this chart was empty now we place an x here now we, we wait, it could have took maybe five, six, seven days until we hit 42, we just wait until that happens. Then January 8th, 41, January 9th, 42, 50, 43, 43.75, January 12th, it hits 44. That's a $2 increment increase, there you go. Now we wait, we'll either wanna, we're looking to go on 46, or we're gonna go down to 42, right? It's either gonna, the next step after 44, we're either gonna be here, or if the stock dropped by $2, we're gonna go down to 42. Let's see what happened next. 45, 44, 41, 50. It drops by, 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 by $2, more than $2, but it drops by our increment. Therefore, we placed a no here. 41, 40. It drops by $2 increment from the original increase. That's another O. Then it went down to 39, 39.50, 39.75, 38. That's $2 from 40. 35, that's another a decrease right there. Now, each column will either have an increases or a decreases. And you can just keep on filling this out until you have a big picture, something that looks like this. Again, this is very subjective. But here's what they do. Once you look at this picture, well, you can draw a support line here a resistance line here, and a resistance line there. Uh, and basically what you say, if the stock price dropped below my support, it's it's gonna, it, it's a sig it's a signal to sell. If it if it if it can penetrate resistance, it's a signal to buy. Um, here you have congestion, basically the same amount, almost the same amount of increases or decreases. But again, how you interpret this, you could interpret it in so many different ways. It's very subjective, but this is what it should look like. It should give you a picture. Some people believe in those uh, charts and they use them properly. Some people, they adjust them, some, you know, why not draw the resistance line, for example, here? It's just, it, it just, it's very subjective, okay? This picture looks better because it's designed to look better. But again, how long it took, you know, we started in 1993, how long is this time period? No one knows. If you start in 1990, it might look different. You know, if you extended it three more years, the whole picture would look different. So that's why you use it with your own risk, basically. Another momentum in the market is the breadth of the market. The breadth of the market is the measure to the, of the extent to which movement in the, in the market indexes is reflected widely in the price movement of all stocks in the market. So how well the over everyone is doing, not only the index itself. The most common measure of the breadth, I mean, how spread it is, is the spread between the, how spread is the increase or the decrease, is the spread between the number of stocks that advance and decline in price. And if you listen to CNBC, they usually mention those terms constantly. If advances outnumber declines by a wide margin, then the market view it as being stronger because the rally is widespread. It means everybody is participating in the rally. Everyone believes all the companies are doing well. These numbers are reported on a daily basis in the Wall Street Journal. And basically, this is a sample from uh, May 25th, 2017. For example, NYSE, we have 1569 advance advancers and 1423 uh, uh, 
stocks that declined that day, not 50-50, but slightly the advances are more. Um, we can see the same thing for NASDAQ and how many did not change, and this is the total. So if you if we really want to see a, a rally, we want to see more of advances and less of decliners. Uh, for example, here we also look at the uh, new 52-week 50, high. If they are more than the new 52-week 50, lows, that's another positive sign. It means investors are bidding the prices up. Why? Because in anticipation of better growth in the, in the in the future. Also, you would look at the volume, share volume. This is also another indicator of the breadth of the market. We look at the advancers number by the volume, by the number of shares versus the decliners. Here we see that more shares were sold, kind of as as, as their, their stock price is declining than advancers. And here's the number of unchanged. Again, those are a little bit subjective as well, but nevertheless, it shows you some momentum about about the stock market. Relative strength is how well you are doing relative to someone else. It measures the extent to which a security, a stock, has outperformed or underperformed either the market as a whole or a particular industry. Or sometimes you could see how well it's doing across, you know, relative to another, to, re relative to another stock. So the relative strength is computed by calculating the ratio of the price of the security to a price index for the industry. For example, you can take the relative strength of Toyota versus the auto industry. This would be measured by movement and the ratio of the price of the Toyota divided by the level of the auto industry. So if Toyota is beating on a relative basis the auto industry, then it must be a buy. It's doing better than the industry itself. So horizon ratio implies Toyota is outperforming the rest of the industry. If relative strength can be assumed to be persistent over time, then this would be a signal to buy Toyota. So this is what you're looking for. In the next session, I would look at sentiment indicators. Um, at the end of the session, I'm going to remind you, to, if you like this recording, please like it and share it. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Subscribe to my YouTube. And don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, if you are looking for additional resources for this course, as well as other accounting and finance courses. Good luck and stay safe.